Hello cuties, how are we doing? Today we're going to be talking about my spring TBR and kind of reading plans, giving you a little tease, a little sneak peek as to what will be coming over the next couple months. So the way I like to do these is I like to do a seasonal TBR to just kind of like reacquaint myself, resituate myself with the videos I've got coming out over the next couple months. I am so excited. <laughs> and the way I like to do these is I like to tell you half books, we're doing 10 books in total today, half books that I have definitive plans for reading, like set videos, this is happening, I'm reading it, and half books that I really want to get to. Now Wishful thinking. Yeah. You're a dreamer, you dream a lot and you're No, sweet. not really. Now, Actually, over the next couple months, I have a lot of videos coming out that I don't know why I'm reading for them yet. It's gonna be like in the moment, finding out, maybe I have a bit more agency with what I pick. So there's a lot of books percolating in my mind that I'd like to fit in over the next couple months, but we're just talking about a few of them. And you can guess as to what some videos that are coming out may be when I tell you the ones I've got definitive plans for. I don't think there's anything else to say. Happy spring, everyone. Well, here's the thing. We had a couple weeks ago, a couple days where like it was spring was in the air. You know, I was like, oh, love is in the air. I was like, I was vibing. I love spring. I love the turning of spring. And then the past couple weeks, it's just been like depressing. Just, just sad. <laughs> <laughs> dark, dreary, it's not been fun. So I am trying to cultivate more spring. I'm in a spring outfit, like we're trying to have spring vibes today. That's the goal. So shall we begin with a book? Let's go definitive plans for, would like to read, definitive plans for, would like to read. The first book I'm gonna mention, I have just found out yesterday that <laughs> I'm gonna be reading this book. I'm gonna be reading it pretty soon, pretty soon, in a couple videos time. <laughs> We've all been waiting for it. I don't know how I feel. <laughs> That's what we've been waiting for! It's what we wanted all along! I, yeah, I'm gonna be reading Funny Donovan is Killing It by El Cosimano, the number one book that you guys have been telling me to read. Like, the number one. <laughs> the number one and i've been putting it off and i've been scared because this is a mystery book that everyone loves everyone on booktube loves this book and i have been avoiding it like the plague i'm gonna be honest with you because i'm like this is made for me so what happens if i don't love it <laughs> all i know about this are following finney donovan who's a single mum and i think she's a writer and she's talking to her agent about the plot of a new book in a coffee shop and a woman overhears misunderstands and hires her as a hit woman to kill her husband honestly boss bitch behavior what can i say i don't believe in the glorification of murder i do believe in the empowerment of women I'm gonna be reading it finally. A lot of you have been like, when is it gonna happen? When are you gonna read it? Uh -huh. You know, asking me all the time. <laughs> Not letting me rest. And it's finally happening in a couple videos time. So keep your eyes out on the next couple of vlogs. It'll be one of them. Maybe like three, three vlogs time. It's been taken out of my hands and I can't avoid it any longer. Not that I've been intentionally avoiding it. I've been wanting to read it so badly, but it just feels like there's a lot of pressure. There's a lot of pressure. So yeah, I don't know. <laughs> then let's chat about one that I would like to read. Well, would I like to read this? It is debatable. Hellbent. <laughs> Hellbent Valley <Bally> Magic. <laughs> I would like to make the time to read this book this month, okay? If you don't know, Ninth House by Lee Bardugo, five stars, I love it. I may, I've been debating that maybe should have made my top 25 books of all time video that I posted recently. That mm, maybe should have made it. And I have waited so many years for Hellbent, right? I read Ninth House right when it came out and I loved it. It was my first ever Lee Bardugo and I just think it's an incredible book. I love the world, the magic, the atmosphere that she builds. And now that this is in my hands, mm, too scared, too scared. <laughs> what are you worried about? <laughs> what are you worried about? I can't do it. We're following Alex Stern, who kind of gets given a second chance at life, and her job is to kind of monitor the secret societies at Yale. They are magical secret societies. And I just thought the first book was so good. The characters, the vibes, the plot, mystery, ugh. It was so good. I just have seen people reading this and enjoying it, and I'm just like, but but, but. It's, it's gotten to the point now where it's one of those books that it's like, oh, I have to read it at the perfect time. Like, I have to be fully in the right headspace to consume this, to appreciate this. <sighs> and I'm feeling sick at the thought. But I would really like over the next couple months to read this. I don't want to put it off. I want to read it. I'm excited. I've been waiting for this for years. I'm so happy it's finally in my hands. 
why have I not read it yet? So hopefully we'll get around to it. Okay, next book, I've just decided I'm gonna do the video that this book is in. So I don't actually own this yet. It's been on my ideas for a long time and I finally decided I'm doing the video. So I don't own it yet, I am gonna purchase it, but we'll put a little picture in. And it's The Floating Admiral. And this is a mystery book that is written by, I wanna say like something like 12 different mystery authors who were, oh my God, what's it called? The Detective Club, The Detection Club? So it's written by this group and it was a group of mystery authors who had this kind of club together. They were busy mates, they, you know, had fun together. And they wrote this book where each of them writes one chapter. So Agatha Christie's in this, Dorothy L. Sayers, uh, Anthony Berkeley, he writes the end chapter from what I know. He pulls it all together. Um, if you watch the video where I tried to solve this book. And I just think this is such a unique idea. I don't, I wanna understand how it works. Like, did they all just like get the previous chapters? and then they have to write the next chapter? Or like, how does this work? Like, <laughs> and how does it work for a mystery book to be written without like a clear or different endings in mind? So my understanding is that Anthony Berkeley writes the last chapter, but you do get in the book as well, at the end, all of the other authors' solutions for what could have happened. And apparently Agatha Christie's one is amazing. So I'm really excited for this one. I'm really excited to give it a go. I think it's just such a unique idea. And as someone who loves mystery, and I wanna get more into classic mystery other than Agatha Christie as well, I think this would be a fun way because Agatha's in there, uh, Anthony Berkeley's in there, I've always wanted to read some Dorothy L. Sayers, so I'm really excited for this. I think it's such a unique idea and I don't know, just like, it just sets off my fun uh, senses. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> like it's such a fun idea to collaborate in this way that it just sets off the fun senses and I have to read it. Okay. I'm having fun, you have no idea. I have so much fun. Next is a book that I would like to get to. We have one that I received actually in my last video, I unboxed it when I did the Courtney Summers reading vlog. It is A Reach for the Stars. I didn't do a good job of pitching this to you, I don't feel like Michael Craig. I was just so overwhelmed to have it in my hands. So this book is a nonfiction that focuses on Britpop, 19, late 1990s, early 2000s. We have the Spice Girls interviews. We have Five, Atomic Kitten, S Club 7, like who else? everyone. <laughs> Girls are loud, sugar babes, oh my god. Like, I'm so excited for this. Richard Osman, actually me and Richard Osman are twins, he just posted on his Instagram that he got this arc as well. Me and Richard Osman getting the same arc, excuse me. And he loved this, he's been reading it already. It's all basically interviews with all of these kind of noughties, 90s pop stars. And I just love like British pop culture history. I think it's so interesting. I'm just so excited to read this. I would really like to get around to it. It does seem quite long, but the font is massive and it's all just interviews. So, oh my God, blue. Yeah, let's talk about blue. One love. For the mother's pride, one love. For the desert cried, one love. Oh, uh, find the note. Find the note. Yeah, I'm super intrigued by this. Super excited to get around to it, and hopefully I will in the next couple months. Then for another one, I do have plans to read. This is actually the next book I'm going to be reading. It is Snow White Learns Witchcraft by Theodora Goss. This is going to be my first time reading Theodora Goss <laughs> since the Strange Case, the Alchemist Daughter series. Ah, uh, are we nervous? <laughs> Theodore Goss wrote my favorite series of all time, The Extraordinary Adventures of the Athena Club. I love that with my whole heart. This is a series of short stories and poems by Theodora Goss, kind of focusing on folklore and fairy tales with this kind of feminist perspective. I'm nervous, but I'm excited. But also like, what's it gonna be? I don't know if I'm the biggest fan of like short stories and poems as like a collection. I just do, I do love a good novel. And so I don't know how I'm gonna react to this, whether it's gonna be that same feeling that I got from this plot and this characters that Theodora Goss wrote in that series. So I don't know, I'm feeling a bit nervous, <laughs> but I need me some more Theodora Goss. And I don't think she really has any other novels other than these. She has a lot of like short story collections and short stories that I wanna make my way through, but I'm reading this next. <laughs> I'm so nervous. On the back, I'll just give you a little, a little taste of some of the stories we've got. A young woman hunts for her wayward shadow at the school where she first learned magic. A bear wedding is cause for celebration. The sea witch reveals what she hoped to gain when she took the mermaid's voice. A wiser Snow White sets out to craft herself a new tale. I'm excited, but I'm nervous. Isn't that the story with all of these? Let's be honest. <laughs> Then we have a romance that I would really like to get to over the next couple months, and that is Honey and Spice by Bolly Babalola. Listen, everyone who I've seen reading this has been loving it. They've been loving it. We need this, this is essential, this is a crisis. I know Kayla, it was like her favorite romance. So many other people I've seen reading this 
and they've been giving it five stars and loving it. So I need to get on it. I follow Bolly Babalola on Twitter and she's one of my favorite people to follow on Twitter. Um, again, I'm nervous. <laughs> You know, romance, I do try to be very discerning with the romance I do pick up, but I think I do a good job of that. Like, I do tend to enjoy a lot of the romance that I pick up. I'm just not, like, super drawn to it as a genre, but when I am drawn to a romance book, I feel like that means something. And I just know this about two characters. Are they at university? I feel like they want, I want to say they're at university. And they just get to know each other and fall in love. And I'm hoping it's going to be a little bit funny, because, but clever. That's that's the sense I get from Bolly Babo's tweets. Like, she's funny. She's into pop culture, she knows the references, but like she's clever, you know? So that's the hope I'm hoping. <laughs> that's the hope I'm hoping. That's the vibe I'm hoping to get from this book. Then a book that I, I would say I have like, this This is 90% certain that I'm gonna be reading it, is The Murder Game by Tom Hindle. So I read A Fatal Crossing by Tom Hindle when I read Murder Mysteries set on a cruise on a cruise. <laughs> when I went on a cruise to Norway. And uh, I didn't love it, but it was his debut. And I'm really intrigued and I want to try more. And this is more of like a, like a, almost like a homage, homage. I never know how to say it properly. Okay, I'm done. Um, <laughs> two classic murder mysteries. So we are at this like dinner party, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, one house, nine guests, endless motives for murder. Guests assemble at Hamlet Hall for a New Year's Eve party to remember. Taking part in a murder mystery game in the 1920s, 20s, oh my God and someone dies, someone's murdered. Ooh. Oh my God, a, a themed murder mystery party with a murder happening. Mm, ideas are percolating in my mind. <laughs> so yeah, I'm really excited. I'm hoping that I'm gonna love this more than I loved A Fatal Crossing because Tom Hindle is giving me murder mysteries that feel referential to classic murder mysteries, but with a modern twist. And I wanna love it. So there's a lot resting on you. <laughs> Then another one that I'm really hoping to get to, I keep looking at this on my shelves and I really want to get to it and it is Half a Soul by Olivia Atwater. So I think this is kind of romancy as well. It's like a fantasy romance. I don't want to know too much. I know it's Regency era, maybe a bit like fae, fairy. I love a bit of historical. I don't know if you guys know that, know that about me, <laughs> but I do love a historical setting and like Regency. I love me some Jane Austen, okay? I do, right? Whenever I was ill as a kid, I would watch the BBC adaptation of Pride and Prejudice. That was my I'm off sick school viewing party. <laughs> That's not normal. And I think, you know, you should maybe get some help or something. And I, I, oh, just Colin Firth. Anyways, so I'm really excited for this. I've heard such good things. I'm looking for more kind of cozy fantasy. I feel like there's a lot out there, but like, the big ones, I feel like I've already read, you know? So I'm looking for new ones and I'm hoping, yes, it is a series, I will be starting a series, but hopefully I'll be finishing a few series, you know, so give a girl a break. <laughs> yeah, I'm super duper excited. I just keep looking at it. I keep looking at it when I'm doing yoga and I'm like on the floor and next to it and I just look at it and I'm like, I need to read it. I need to read it. <laughs> And then another book that I've just decided to do the vlog for, so I don't own the book for yet, but uh, I'm gonna be reading, what is it? The last thing he told me? I'll put it here. That's what it's called. I know this is just being made into a film. This is being made into a film and it looks really, really good. So all I know about this is that we are following, I think like a, a step mum and her stepdaughter and the girl's dad has just gone missing. And he was like, just always protect my daughter for me if everything, anything ever happens. And they're trying to uncover, there's something, there's something going on. There's something mysterious going on in his disappearance. Did, was he who he said he was? What's going on? What's the truth? So yeah, so what do we know about it? But I just thought I'd let you know that I'm reading it and I'm nervous for the video that it's gonna be in. That's all you need to know, okay? You could start coming up with some ideas. That's, uh, that's what I'm gonna say, you could start coming up with some ideas, you know? And then the final book that I'm really hoping I get to, and putting on this list is holding me accountable, uh, but I really wanna get to it, it is The Tea Dragon Festival by Kay O'Neill. <laughs> um, I am so excited to read it, but I don't know if I'm ready. This is a prequel to The Tea Dragon Festival, one of my favorite graphic novels ever, and I've decided it's time. I can't wait any longer, I have to read this. It'll take me like no time at all, but it's time. I don't know too much about what this one's about other than it is a prequel and we're following a lot of the elder characters from the first book when they're young. And it's just these little tea dragons who make tea, who brew tea with their leaves. What can I say? What can I say? It's the cutest, most heartwarming. If you're looking for cozy fantasy, like try this graphic novel series out. Why not? Why not? Who <laughs> said cozy fantasy just have to be novels? It can be graphic novels. But yeah, I just loved the first one so much. And I've been like, like, you know when you, 
save the best food on your plate till last. Does anyone else do that? I like to like eat the stuff I'm not as excited for first and then just be left with like the good stuff. That's what I feel like I do with this. I've been holding it off, holding it off. I wanna make this last but it's time to read one of them. So there we have it. That is my spring TBR, sneak peek of some of the videos I'm gonna be doing over the next couple months, as well as some books that I'm hoping to fit in for those videos where I can fit in other books. I don't know what I'm reading yet. Those are kind of the books that I'm hoping to prioritize. And yeah, let me know what books you're hoping to read in the next couple months. If you go into the end, comment a spring flower emoji, any kind of spring pink, yellow flower. We're seeing spring in, oh yay. <laughs> Uh, comment down below if you got to the end. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you very soon in another video. Bye!